God is able. Jeremiah 32, verse 27. Behold, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? Have you ever wondered what makes God God? We often say it's because He's almighty, and some other times because He can do all things. This ability of His to do all things is what we cannot yet fully comprehend. God operates on a level that is vastly different to ours and often non-comprehensible to us as humans. As humans, in our attempt to understand God, we try to think of God as a mere mortal. As we reduce Him to our finiteness of thought patterns, which is often time-limited and distanced to His, this is why God speaking in Isaiah 55 verse 8 says that, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither ways my ways. God was trying to express the difference between how he sees and does things to the way we see and do things. We as Christians by faith most times declare, according to Philippians 4 verse 13, that we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. We accrue the strength to do all things through God, one who enables us and gives us the power to do all things. The Omnipotence of God God is able, because He is omnipotent, we see His ability expressed in the creation of the world out of nothing. Hebrews 11 verse 3 Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. God doesn't need anything, as it were, to create something. His ability is reflected in power demonstrated by his word. The galaxy's arrangement in their vast array, the wiring of man, the entirety of all he created, is the inexplicable display of his abilities and intelligence. S. M. Lockridge gives a wonderful explanation of how God created the world. He says, The reason God came from nowhere is because there wasn't anywhere for him to come from. And coming from nowhere, he stood on nothing. For there was nowhere for him to stand and standing on nothing, he reached out where there was nowhere to reach and caught something when there was nothing to catch. Then he hung that something on nothing and told it to stay there, and nobody said a word, because there wasn't anybody around to say anything. Then God said to himself, That is good. His omnipotence means that he is all-powerful, and doesn't lack the ability or strength to do anything. He practically has power over all that we see and don't even get to see. He has control over water, air, land, the sea, the forces of nature, and all that is obtainable in our world and in the spirit world. There is nothing in existence that doesn't answer to his power and almightiness. We see in the Bible so many instances where God and His amazing power came through in the time for people's needs. We see time and time again different people, different nations in trouble, and as they cried out to God, He would come rescue them in their time of need. The God we see in the Bible, He is still very much able to do wonders in your life also. He is still very ready to release his life-changing power into that very situation in your life. The very situation in your life that looks impossible. Hebrews 13 verse 8 says, Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today and forever. God's ability was expressed in his release of judgment that came in the form of a flood during Noah's time. Not only did Noah see the hand of God, 
The children of Israel in Egyptian capacity saw the hand of God. Exodus 3 verse 7 And the Lord said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people which are in Egypt, and have heard their cry, by reason of their taskmasters, for I know their sorrows. They weren't alien to the power of God. Israel was delivered from slavery and at this point was being guided by the pillow of fire by night and the cloud by day. God was showing up in even stronger ways than he did to take them out of Egypt. God speaking to Moses out of a burning bush, telling him to go down to Egypt and confront Pharaoh and tell him to let my people go, and God causing a stick to turn it into a snake. God delivered them. God had done so much for them. They had a lot to remember. Pharaoh in his stubbornness refused to listen to Moses, so God fought for his people using nature. The plagues came forth, water turning into blood. The frogs came forth and slept in the beds of Pharaoh and his people. Lice and flies, locusts came forth and took over the lands of Egypt. And God kept warning Pharaoh over and over again, let my people go. But Pharaoh remained stubborn, and the pestilence, and the boils, and the hailstorm, and the lightnings flashed, and the thunder roared. The people of Israel had a lot to remember. Did you see that? God saw what the children of Israel were going through. He saw their pain. I want to remind you today that God has not forgotten. God has not abandoned you. He knows what you are going through. He sees your pain. He sees your heartbreak. He sees your situation. God moved into action, not only because he saw what they were going through. He moved into action because of their cry. Exodus 3 verse 7 says, I have heard their cry. In your situation today, Cry out to the Lord. Cry out to Him. He will hear you. Now look what He did for the children of Israel. He delivered them. You can rest assured that God is mindful of you, and His intention to answer you surpasses even your requests before Him. Before they call, I will answer. While they are yet speaking, I will hear. Isaiah 65 verse 24 He is ready to answer if you will only tap into his ability to do all things. God's ability was also expressed when he apprehended Saul of Tarsus, the persecutor of the church. Saul, who eventually changed his name to Paul after his conversion, was a hardened persecutor of the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. However, it didn't cost so much in his infinite power to make him surrender and end up proclaiming the message he once kicked against to the Gentiles. Acts 9 verses 4 to 6 And he fell on the earth, and heard a voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul, why persecutes thou me? And he said, Who art thou, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecute. It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. And he, trembling and astonished, said, Lord, what wilt thou have me to do? And the Lord said unto him, Arise, and go into the city, and it shall be told thee what thou must do. God's ability is also expressed in his helping hand extended to the helpless and hopeless. God shows his ability in our dire situations at the time we least expect anything to happen. A recourse to our initial verse, Jeremiah 32 verse 27. Behold, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? How do you explain the virgin giving birth? Or aged Sarah conceiving? Is there anything too hard for God to do? For with God's knowledge, nothing is impossible. Luke 1 verse 37 I just want to help build your faith in God today. 
Your situation is not helpless. Your life is not over. God will make a way. Wait for Him. Even when it seems God is not there to deliver us, His ears are not deaf, nor His hands short. Don't give up on God. He has the best plans for you. If God could not spare His only begotten Son, but allowed Him to die for you, He can do anything for you. He that spared not His own Son, but delivered Him up for us all, how shall He not with Him also freely give us all things? Romans 8 verse 32 If ye abide in me, and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. John 15 verse 7 Only be sure to stay in His will. Remember, Satan tempted Eve, and she doubted God's good intention. And we are. Please be aware of the devil's temptations, which are targeted at you to doubt God. Always bear in mind that God is well able to fulfill His promises to you. Wait on and for Him, and He will unfailingly show up. Hebrews 6 verse 12